So let's calculate now the example how this process is done. Now this is the cross section that we are doing analysis. Okay, it is having a width of 300 mm and a depth of 500 mm, right? And we are considering three points for crack width calculation. One is A, another one is B, which is just below the uh, longitudinal bar, and there is one more location C, which is going to be at a distance of if I take let's say this is your neutral axis depth. And I'm considering this point two third of d minus six. So let's see how we can calculate the crack width of all these three points. You'll find that uh, even though c is little inside, there also crack width is not small. Okay, so we will calculate now. Now, what are the load that we are looking at? It is having subjected to a load of twenty kilonewton meter, and it is as in span of five meters, and we are taking a simply supported span. Okay. And we are going to use M30 and FE500 grid, and we are saying that the bottom steel is three numbers of 20 mm bar. Okay. Now let us see how to do the calculation. So EST is already given to you, 5 by 4 d square multiplied by 3. So total area of steel is 943 millimeter square. Now service moment is WL square by 8. So 20 into 5 square by 8, which is 62.5 kilometer meter. An elastic modulus of concrete, 5000 square root of FCK, 27386 megapascal. Elastic modulus of steel, 200 into 10 to the power of 3 megapascal. So we have taken modulus ratio is ES by EC. So when you divide ES by EC, you get a modulus ratio of 7.30, right? So these are the given data, is already given. To you. Now let's look at uh, how to calculate for this, okay? The first step is I need to calculate my crack to moment of inertia. And for to calculate the crack moment of inertia, we are going to assume that concrete below the neutral axis is going to be neglected. And I am going to convert the steel into an equivalent concrete area using modular ratio. Then by equating the moments of these areas, I can calculate the positions of your neutral axis, which is x. So this area is 300. And if this is taken as x, so 300 into x. And if I take moment about this, neutral axis location, right? Then you can find 300x square by 2 should be equal to 7.3 multiplied by 943 MAST multiplied by this distance, which is small d minus x, right? So that is what we have taken. Small d is 450, right? Minus x. So x works out to be 122.79 millimeter. Now what is cracked moment of inertia? Again, we can do, we are calculating the crack moment of inertia through neutral axis, depth as an axis. So we take this as an axis for this area, it is going to be P x square by 3. So this is B x square by 3, that is your uh, area of compression area. Now, anyway, uh, we are calculating our neutral axis. So, so the moment of inertia of the bar through its CG is going to be less. So using parallaxis theorem, it is just the area multiplied by the distance between the location of this MAST and the neutral axis, which is d minus x the whole square. So if you substitute that, this is again coming from parallaxis theorem, right? Axis theorem, right? So ICR you got, right? So you got ICR as 9.22 into 10 to the power of 8 millimeter per four, right? So let's look at now. So you got neutral axis depth and cracked moment of finish. Now let's calculate what is epsilon one. Okay, strain at the, in the concrete at the level of steel. So that means this location, we are measuring what is the strain, okay? That's what we are trying to measure. If I measure this, then I can extrapolate and get epsilon one at A and B. Similarly at C also, right? So first let's calculate this, okay, what is the strain? So epsilon C is nothing but FCS by EC. And uh, anyway, we are doing linear elastic analysis, right? So FCS is nothing but moment divided by distance divided by crack to moment of inertia. So if you substitute that, FCS is working out to be moment is 62.5 into 20 power of 6 Newton millimeter. D is 450, X is 122.79. And divided by crack moment of inertia, you get stress in the concrete as 22.18 megapascal. And uh, your epsilon C is because everything is assumed to be, uh, in fact, for this uh, stress, concrete may not be elastic, 
but we are assuming that it is going to be nearly elastic. So you divide by the elastic modulus to get the strain in the concrete at the level of steel, which works out to be 8.09 into 10 to the power of minus 4 uh, so strain. Okay, this is epsilon CS. Now I need epsilon 1 at the bottom location and at A and B and C, right? So let's go ahead and do what is epsilon 1 at A and B. Okay, for A and B, then we need to do extrapolation. So epsilon ECS we have calculated. Okay, this we have got. Now I need to find this. Okay, at the end. So now how do we do that? This multiplied by this is your extrapolation factor, which is A minus X by D minus X. In this case, A is equal to capital D. So that is the reason D minus X by D minus X. So you just simple extrapolation when you do, it's going to be higher value of. 9.326 into 10 to the power of minus 4 right very simple now again what is that we are interested in we are not interested in crack to section epsilon 1 we are interested in mean tensile strain which is epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2 okay now let us calculate what are the mean strains okay mean strains we have done this is epsilon 1 which we have already got and this is your epsilon 2 okay this is your epsilon 2 Okay, so uh, that we derive this expression assuming FCTS is 0 0.67. If you remember, that's why we got this one third mega Pascal. So uh, that works out to be P into capital D minus X times A minus X divided by 3 ES AST times D minus X. So if you plug in all these equations for all the points A, B, C, I can calculate in terms of A minus X. Now, only thing is A is going to keep changing. Right for A and B, the small A is actually capital D, but for point C, A is actually it is basically you have to calculate x plus two third of d minus x. Right, so let's look at this now. What A and B uh, A is equal to d? So if you substitute these values, you get epsilon m is 9.326 into 10 to the power of minus 4, minus if you substitute for all the values, then you get the value as. 7.020 into 10 to the power of minus 4. Okay, so we get this mean strain at A and B as not the character section value, which is 9.326, but we are reducing it by some magnitude to account for the contribution of concrete in tension. So your mean strain has reduced from epsilon 1 of 9.326 to 7.020. Now, similar way, I can do it for location 3 also. Okay. Epsilon 1 first we do, right? And, uh, and now for this location, if you see, this is your epsilon CS, okay? Now I need this strain. So using similar triangle, what we do? Epsilon CS multiplied by D minus X by D minus X times uh, 2 by 2 third, okay? Because this is the location 2 third of X we have taken, right? So uh, we do that and then you get the value of 6.26 because it's going to be lesser than this epsilon CS. That's why we get 6.216. And again, what is the mean strain? At this, again, crack section, epsilon 1 I cannot use. I have to use epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2. So that again, we can consider A as this, which is X plus 2 third of D minus X, which works out to be A as 340.93 millimeter. Then we substitute in that equation that we derive for epsilon m as epsilon 1 minus this epsilon 2, which is 6.2112 into 10 to the power of minus 7 times this. You substitute that, you get a mean strain of a low value 4.882 into 10 to the power. So until this, we have calculated only the mean tensile strain. We did crack section, we cracked strain is subtracted by uh, some strain value. Assuming that triangular stress distribution for concrete in tension with a value of 0.67 megapascal, and then this works out to be the mean strain at all the three points that we are interested in. Now that we got mean strain, we know what is ACR for all the small ACR for all the points. Now let's go ahead and calculate what are the crack widths. So, only thing is from IS code, we know crack width is ACR multiplied by epsilon CM multiplied by constant. So, here I'm going to say that I'm going to use deformed bar because nowadays smooth bars are not allowed from bond resistance point of view. We use only uh, deformed bar. So the con constant is 3.3. Now what is ACR point? We have done that. It is basically 
s by 2 whole square plus uh, the distance effective cover minus the half the diameter okay so the diameter we are assuming 20 mm bar so 50 square plus 50 square minus 10 which works out to be 60.7 these are the 60.71 for acr from here to this distance okay this is your acr at a okay now what is that acr at b okay so we are doing at this just below this point right so this is your acr similarly what is the c is here so let's look at now at d what is acr again it is going to be 50 your effective cover minus half the diameter because it is directly below the bar right so acr is this distance from here to here right the point that what we are considering on the outside right so uh, that is what we are taking and uh, for this you see that the crack width that b is in fact the corner one is expected to have a higher crack width because it is having higher acr but the location just below the bar is having a lesser crack width okay so similarly at c uh, again we calculate this acr so, uh, 50 square plus this whatever the distance that you take uh, minus 10 so it works out to be 109 uh, point because in this case c point you take this distance right this distance is what you calculate acr right so if you substitute it so that's what using your geometry you get this acr as this and then you substitute you get 0 0.177 so you see here though the point c is above the steel on the tension side in this case because the acr value is higher that's why there is a potential for having larger crack width at this location also, which we should be we should be careful so we cannot say that because the point is within the cross section is getting closer to the neutral axis it doesn't mean that it will not crack it is also a function of how close that point is to the tension most rebar okay that acr is high so this value is high that is the reason the crack width for this point c is working out to be higher than what you get for point a and b so that we need to be very careful right so these are the uh, ways that we can calculate so again how do what did we do we did first calculate the neutral axis depth by converting into a cracked section and then we calculate the uh, cracked strain uh, section uh, strain considering the cracked section epsilon 1 so then that epsilon 1 has to be reduced by some magnitude epsilon 2 by assuming some stress contribution of concrete in tension that is epsilon 2 then when you do that epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2 for all the three points you get mean tensile strain mean tensile strain is 1 now crack width is constant multiplied by acr multiplied by epsilon m so epsilon m, m we have calculated acr is basically a geometry depending upon which point that you are considering you can consider the distance acr then you multiply by proportional factor which is 3.3 right so for deform bars so in this way we have calculated the crack then uh, this is the example okay then we can also have uh, situations where members can be subjected to direct and eccentric tensions okay for example, axial tension is predominant structural action in walls of water tanks, bins, silos, pressure vessels, suspenders, ties, uh, in arch, roof and bridges. So, uh, all these elements can be subjected to direct or eccentric tension. Okay. In fact, IS code does not give any recommendations for estimating crack widths in members under direct or eccentric tension. Our British code gives some recommendations. So, here what we do is, again, uh, when you have tension and bending, your neutral axis can go fall outside the cross section so we assume these kind of a strain distribution okay and rest of the process is all same okay and assuming that neutral axis is going to be uh, 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 x we are considering that to be away, away as a minus x right so you can calculate your strain as fsm by es and mean strain epsilon m uh, is taken as fsm by es times this kind of an extrapolation factor which is d if you remember d minus x by uh, d plus x in case of extreme pure tension x will tends to infinity because pure compression pure tension neutral axis there is no neutral axis neutral axis will be at infinity and you in this case then you can consider x to be equal to minus d in your calculations okay so if you substitute that and you get your epsilon m then again rest of the things remain same 
that's with this 3 into ACR times epsilon m. Now, what is epsilon m again? Epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2. And this epsilon 1 is what we have uh, discussed this previously. And epsilon 2 is taken by this kind of an average strain, which is specified as, you know, here the uh, British code is giving different FCT for, like in the previous case for IS code simplification, we take, we took FCTS as 0.67 megapascal, right? Though it was specifying 0.55. In this case, if you are limiting your crack width to 0.1, then you can take 1 megapascal for FCT. But if you are limiting it to 0.2 millimeter, then you can take slightly a lower value, a little bit more conservative, right? Points you can higher the crack width. Again, the ability of the concrete to contribute in tension is also going to be less. So that is the reason code is saying that, okay, you take 0.67 and using this, you plug in and then you get your epsilon 2 and subtract it from epsilon 1 to get your mean strain. Once you get your mean strain, then you put it in your crack width equation, 3 into ACR multiplied by epsilon m, get your crack width, okay. For other crack widths, which is 0 0.3 or 0 0.4, uh, FCT value have been not specified by BS, okay. And linear interpolation or extrapolations are actually saying that not permitted. In other words, for uh, uh, such kind of two tension members, again, you have to limit your crack width to 0 0.2 millimeter. That is what indirectly the code is actually saying, okay. You have to either uh, limit the crack width to 0.1 mm or 0.2 millimeter. Right. So, with this, let's summarize the discussion that we had in this module. Uh, here, we discussed the importance of crack width, why we need to measure the crack width, and we looked at what are the factors that influence the crack width. One single important factor is to reduce the stress in the tension steel and also put closer spacing of the rib. And uh, we looked at code requirements for crack width. Okay and how this uh, crack width formulation that is given in IS456, we have uh, derived that also. And we also looked at a numerical problem to solve the concept better and apply it to design problems, right? So with that, uh, these are some of the references that you can look at it. And again, Witt uh, uh, is a very, uh, Witt and McGregor is a very nice reference. You can look at that as well. And you can also look at uh, reinforced concrete design by Pillay and Menon. And uh, thank you. So I would like to acknowledge uh, my student, Muthuraja's help in the preparation of the slides. So we'll continue in the next model. Thank you.